Thanks for staying on with us. Uh, this is uh, the Economies of Election or the Economics of Election. It's a sub program under my show Notepad. This is because we want to give a completely entirely dedicated show focused on some of the economic policies and just general policies that shape our country in this particular election. Joining me is Bayer's MD or Managing Director Leong Suk Fan. Uh, of course, uh, thanks again for taking time to speak with us. It's five more days before it's polling day. There's a lot that needs to be discussed when it comes to policies. Unfortunately, I don't know about you, but I feel that the, you know, the politicians on the campaign trail, they talk a lot about rhetorics, they talk a lot about the ability for them to win and what they're going to do, but details on some policies remain scant. Uh, do you feel that is the case as well, um, uh, Sukhfan? So, um, first of all, thanks for having me again, yeah, Ibrahim. It's great to see you. Um, so, if, if you look at Malaysia today, yeah, um, we do need a healthcare reform. Yeah, that's that's a critical need. We all know that. Um, one in every second adult in Malaysia is obese. Yeah, more than seventy percent of the disease are NCDs. Mm. For example, cardiovascular disease. Uh, you have diabetes. You have you know cancer, and I think policies need to be shaped to address those critical issues. Mm. So there's NCDs and there's also the aging population. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, policies need to look at things which are able to bring innovation and access to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to have public and uh, private health, health uh, sector work together closely. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about health care, right, you take it from the spectrum of sick care and self-care. Okay. Yeah, so we, we know that there's a lot of things that need to be done on self-care so that you can drive access. Yeah? And access comes with also responsible access where it needs, needs to uh, literacy and education. So policy that allows uh, people to be more uh, empowered and knowledgeable to take charge of their health is critical. Okay, yeah. which I, I really need to deep dive right now because you, uh, Bayer is celebrating your 50th anniversary in Malaysia. You guys have been around for hundreds of years uh, and, and I just need to understand a little bit better what you think. I know you're not an MP or a health minister, but generally speaking, you've, you, you, because of you operating in multiple countries, you know what works, what doesn't, you know what is cost effective, what isn't. What healthcare policies do you think must be done to create a better uh, healthcare situation for Malaysia? Now, okay. So, so on Bayer, yeah, we've been around for 50 years in Malaysia. Yeah, uh, we have successfully championed holistic healthcare and agriculture. So, if you look at what we stand for, right, we have, uh, you know, in the past, Bayer used to be a conglomerate. Yeah, we have many business units everywhere. We were actually we have a few legal entities, right? But just in recent years, we have integrated into a life science company. Mm. Yeah, and by life science, I mean uh, playing in the field of food, nutrition, and health. And these are the most basic human needs. Yeah. Mm. So in that light, right, in Malaysia, if you look at uh, where we are today, right, we definitely need to have uh, 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 policies that address challenges of the growing population and aging population. Yeah? So we need to be able to prevent and treat diseases. We need to be able to ensure a reliable supply of uh, you know, quality food mm. to our people. Mm. So in Bayer, we are doing that with in light of our vision, uh, with science for a better life and health for all, hunger for none. So at the end of the day, it is about you know, food and nutrition. Okay, yeah. the problem here is that based on various uh, studies, including that of the UN Special um, uh, Repertoire um, that reported a few years ago, that the B40 community is malnourished, especially those in the urban areas. We're looking at general wider population, B40 tend to have better access to greater food. Uh, this is because they grow and plant their own food. Uh, the problem here is still in the B40 urban areas. And Malaysia has a 70% urban rate or suburban rate. We're looking at many malnourished situations happening in the B40 group and to some degree M40 as well. Do you feel that food access and good food access, quality food access, greater access to say plants and vegetables, greater access towards uh, you know, cheaper forms of protein is critical for us to make this you know, a better, healthier nation? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So if you, if you look at today, right, the main issue is inflation. Yeah? So inflation and increasing of cost of uh, doing business, right, that actually have a stretch on the smallholders farmers right, to make a living. Yeah? So we're looking at policies that allow them to have a better livelihood. So for example, right, we want to see a more reliable and steady subsidy from the government to have the f these smallholders farmers to give them access to you know, uh, 
quality crop protection and seed inputs, right? So that they can actually then, you know, harvest better use, better quality food, right? And cascade down back to the uh, the, 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 the malnourished uh, 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 eligible people who are at the B40 or even M40, mm. right? And also, one of the things that's also quite important is also the government has a policy to ensure a steady influx uh, of uh, labour, yeah? Because if you know, last year, right, or even the last recent years, we have had problem with labour shortages, right? We don't have enough people who come to, to actually work in the farms and plantation to harvest. So, uh, by the government working on this area, right, we can ensure, you know, even from the neighbouring countries, our Indonesians, labourers, right, who will come and actually work and increase the productivity so that our farmers can, you know, uh, uh, harvest and have a better use of their income. And it also then translate to the whole uh, population in terms of food security and quality food. I've had the privilege to visit some of the farms in China, Germany and France um, over my course of being a reporter here uh, in, in Estrovani. The ability for them to leverage on technology and increase the yield um, is amazing, uh, resulting in them having to uh, use lesser uh, labor, but mm -hmm. at the same time having the need to invest more in uh, machinery and yeah. other um, um, technological advances. Uh, do you feel that a lot of uh, governmental assistance must be given into this space on top of the subsidies that you speak of? Because normally, when we talk about subsidies, we're already hitting 80 billion ringgit, perhaps more by the end of this year. Subsidies needs to be weaned off eventually, somehow or other. But more importantly, how do we equip ourselves or future-proof ourselves? Also, do you feel that you know companies like Bayer has the opportunity to invest in these kind of areas, to improve on the crop yields and crop productivity, and to increase um, uh, output while reducing cost? So, so in our biggest division globally, right, which is crop science, right, we are a leader, global leader enterprise in the field of agriculture. We have, you know, uh, we are focused in terms of bringing innovation in the areas of crop protection and seeds, yeah, mm. seeds input. Uh, so today, uh, we definitely see a lot of opportunity to partner, yeah, public and private sector mm. to bring these innovations, yeah, to, to the country, yeah, mm. whether it's in terms of digital farming. In Malaysia. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. So even in the last, give you some example, right? In the in the in the couple of years ago, we actually partnered with the Ministry of Modernization Agriculture in Sarawak to actually pilot a uh, hybrid rice planting. Uh, to actually, you know, look at the effectiveness of maximizing the yield of this hybrid rice yeah, uh -huh. in Sarawak, yeah, with the intent to actually uh, increase the farmers, you know, profitability and income, so that they can make a better living, and then, you know, can continue from there. Mm. So these are the things that we do, and we we partner with the uh, Department of Agriculture to, to bring those innovation in, and that's what we can continue to actually explore. Uh, Would you consider this to be a pilot project or something that can be scaled or scalability is there? Definitely, but it needs to be you know, supported by the government with the, with the ecosystem that's right as well, right? Uh, and there must be interest to really drive that uh, across uh, the country. And we started with a very uh, a small state in Sarawak, yeah, but then again, take it to the bigger, it needs More to have a... Small, a yeah. I can see what you mean. <laughs> uh, yeah. What about working with your competitors? Is that something that is uh, on the table? right now? Uh, that, so far we have not embarked on that, yeah, uh, it, it's something that it's uh, not uh, quite tricky, mm, yeah, in mm. that sense, uh, because we oh, need because of proprietary information. Correct, correct, oh. yeah, so, so far we don't really have that in place yet, yeah. Okay, the new government is going to be set up, it might be the same AMNO BN led government, it might be a new government, do you foresee challenges in terms of working with the new government in executing some of the projects that you are currently doing, mm -hmm. and as well as forming up new strikes of partnerships and, and launch new products and services and, and perhaps projects like this uh, in the near future? Um, I think every government would want to look at uh, driving, you know, better access to science and innovation. Yeah, I think every government would want, even the new government or the current government, they've, they've done uh, in that sense. Uh, so I, I, I feel the mi the biggest challenge remains, right, ensuring that we really put together a plan to really move from a sick care uh, mm. to a, a self care. Yeah, mm. and that dynamic, right, means really giving the right framework of access. Yeah, of of uh, products that allows our consumers to take charge of their health, yeah? Because um, you have to understand, right, uh, it's a chicken and egg situation, right? If you are not giving the empowerment with the right education, right, consumers don't know uh, mm. where, where they can, where, what are they going to be, uh, 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 yeah. th that's on Accessing, the table. Yeah. Correct. So, so that's one, yeah? And, and this also means uh, very simple things, right, like giving education uh, with, with hospitals, with healthcare professionals on the cardiovascular diseases and how this is a, a key burden to them, yeah? So, so that's one. Um, so I, I foresee that uh, as long as this is on the table for, with, the, with the new government, right, 
uh, we will continue to work together with that. Yeah, and definitely from the industry perspective, right? We are already. Yeah, so we're waiting uh, for the government to to form. Yeah, which whoever wins the election, um, and I believe there's still a lot of opportunity to drive through. Yeah. Well, when we talk about some of the policies uh, and plans, that's one thing. But of course, execution is another. Um, I've had a rather robust conversation with some of the folks uh, that are driving this um, um, uh, in Kuala Lumpur and they argue that uh, the private sector is better equipped, more efficient, um, better regulated in terms of executing this. But my contestation to them is that you, know, you might not necessarily look at the greater picture even if it is good for the public, if, if it's not profitable, you can't see the cash inside, there's no incentive for the private sector to move ahead. That's why we need the public sector to come into the free where is the dynamic in terms of the public private partnership that you speak of right now where should the leadership come from and where should the execution driving this uh, be made so so i think it's both sides yeah ibrahim i think it's both sides right so from from the private sector we 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 have to fund this not alone, yeah. We cannot work alone. So, so going back to your question about working with competition, right? We do go on that front, but from an industry association point of view, uh. yeah. So, in in the pharma in the pharma industry that what we what we belong to, right? We work on a lot of uh, initiatives on that on that on that front, yeah, to actually drive advocacy for changes in policy. Now, um, uh, also in Bayer, we've also done a lot of publication with uh, the uh, academician. Uh, in the National University, what we've actually come up with a uh, healthy aging paper, talk about heart, uh, healthy heart, mm. so that we can at least understand the disease burden of cardiovascular. Mm. So these are things that we do, uh, and also besides that, right, from a medical assist assistance point of view, right, we will continue to give you know patient assistance program to patients who needs, for example, cancer treatments, right, as long as they are medically required to do so. Yeah. So these are the things that uh, we will continue to pursue. Uh, in light of uh, what is what is imperative, yeah, from from the from the industry as well, yeah. Fantastic. We'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a bit more with Bayer Malaysia. Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me in the studio Bay Malaysia's Managing Director, Leong Suk Fan. Uh, we need to talk a little bit more about uh, your program called Healthcare for All, Hunger for None, you've uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, what would entail uh, following this uh, campaign? Now, um, so that Health for All, Hunger for None is our vision. Yeah? So it's also at the backdrop of our mission of Science for a Better Life. Mm. So, so Bayer has been around for a long time in Malaysia. Uh, we serve the most basic human needs, yeah? mm. health, and food or nutrition mm. and what this means for us is we basically help to prevent and treat diseases yeah we also make sure there's a reliable supply of food mm. on the table where to prevent a food crisis uh, with our innovation in crop protection yeah mm. and we do this with health for all hunger uh, hunger uh, for none in mind mm. Um, and uh, on top of that, right, uh, in pharmaceutical, our, our, our division in Malaysia, right, which deals with prescription products, we've had uh, a lot of innovation, yeah, to treat liver cancer. And what we bring to the table is also innovation, right, to actually, you know, uh, bring colorectal patients with advanced cancer, right, the precious gift of time, yeah. We've also dealt with uh, things like, you know, preventing uh, stroke in atrial fibrillation patients. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat, right? So that's a high risk of stroke. And in terms of uh, family planning, yeah, we also protect women yeah, from uh, unplanned pregnancies. So that is from the pharmaceutical point of view right, and what we stand for. Now, if you look at the consumer health spectrum, right, uh, what we have uh, played a role, right, very key is really to bring in very basic, you know, essential uh, over-the-counter products, right, so that people can take very basic care of them or their own health, right? Take charge to empower themselves. So, example, during Ramadan uh, this year, we actually, you know, uh, give uh, uh, products like supplements, right, to, uh, to, the, to the consumers to help them 
carry on their fasting in the day, uh, starting off their saho, right, with some supplement so that they can carry on, yeah. And during the uh, COVID period, we partnered with the JKJAB, which is a special committee for the COVID vaccine supply, right, yeah. to help advocate and educate people on the importance of, you know, COVID vaccine, yeah, uh, to, to have acceptance. And we do that by also, you know, uh, protecting our frontliners. We give them supplements like Redoxin, vitamin C, right, so that they can feel protected. At the same time, we give education. So these are the roles that we can play. And in the area of crop science, we've worked with the government, right, to support their effort to increase our own country self-sufficiency in rice, yeah? So it means that yeah, we want to depend less and less on import, right? So self-sufficiency in rice means we also need to bring in modern farming methods, right? And also technology so that the farmers can actually have better use, yeah? Have stronger crops, right? And they also get better livelihood from there. So this is what Health for All, uh, Hunger for None stands for for us. Yeah. What about nutrition advocacy? Uh, do you feel that Malaysians should really be op more um, open to uh, campaigns on getting more proteins, getting more uh, diet in, in terms of vegetables and reducing carbohydrates? Um, I know it's, it's not ideal, particularly when we talk about low-income family groups, but generally speaking, this will all lead to NCDs, this will all lead to uh, you know, lifelong diseases. Correct. Ab absolutely. You know, I and think lifestyle for that matter. Go exercise. Go out there and walk or something. Exactly. So, so you, when you talk about self care, right? You know, uh, Ibrahim. It starts with those basic, your diet, you whether you are exercising, yeah. So those things, whether you are a smoker or whether you are a drinker, that kind of thing. So, so you, you start with those basic, yeah. So from the food itself, and we always believe, even if you take supplements, right, you have to make sure you have a balanced diet. Supplements, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, Can that only do so much. Correct. But 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 then again, we think a little bit about how much. How many of us do get a balanced diet these days with our lifestyles, right? And even the food, how it's you know how it's uh, actually stored, right? No, the problem is people don't see the importance of it, or people do understand the importance of it, but so many other priorities take place first, Correct. and then they push this down. Correct, but that's where education and literacy comes to play, right? And how the government shape the policies, how they actually drive it to you know uh, the clinic kesehatan and drive that information. Uh, to the people, yeah, and very basic information, and I think we need to see policies that shape to those kind of uh, advocacy. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, would you argue that, or would you agree that um, advocacy and spreading information should be Bayer's main priority right now, on top of the many other things that you guys are doing? Because if you do control the voice of information out there, you might be able to control market share and help your bottom line. Correct. Wh whatever we do, right? There's always a, we call it a science-led self-care. Yeah, okay. signs that self care. So we, we give signs, but in a very simple way that consumers can understand. Mm. And of course, we have to partner with healthcare professionals. So I'll mm. give an example. So what we do in consumer health, right, there's two prongs. When we educate people, we need to make sure that they are able to digest. So for example, a simple thing like immunity, right? Uh, you have to tell them why you need to to increase or strengthen your immunity. Yeah? It's not just something that, because you can't see whether your immunity is working or not, right? So we do very simple questionnaire for people to checklist things like, have you been coughing? Have you been tired? They do the simple, and then those things are actually disseminated through work together with healthcare professionals like pharmacists, because community pharmacies are out there. We're not out there. So you need to partner with these people who are in the community. So together with very simple tools that can help people to access their own health. Yeah. There's also rejection of information, just flat out denying. Um, how do you engage with these community members that might not necessarily appreciate the concept of facts, science, data, and quite frankly, truth? Uh, well, I think there will always be uh, rejectors. Yeah, uh, we just need to keep uh, pushing the boundaries of science. I was just having a conversation with a with a flatmate, a um, uh, person who lives um, in my condo. He doesn't want to take uh, the second booster shot. He didn't even take the first booster shot. Right. So I asked him why. Right. He said, "Oh, this whole microchip argument came about," and right. I'm like. Oh my God. Right. So, so again, right, you have to go back to facts and science. So we believe as and a science-based company... It's not a B40. <laughs> not. I know, I know, I know. It, it, it's, not, it's not the first case we've heard, right? So you go back to even what our Ministry of Health was championing. is a little bit about showing people the evidence and the science, you know, and, and that uh, as opposed to compared to what is in the talk of rumours, you know, and, and non-based, uh, non-fact-based... Non uh, uh, what do you call that? Pedestrian... Correct. 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 So if you look at the science, and we anchor all our activity and activation on science at the end of the day. But how do you not get frustrated? Because, yeah, you know. You, you got to keep on pushing, right? Uh, that's why we've been around for 50 years <laughs> and we're still, you know, uh, driving, <laughs> yeah. driving successful business. And, uh, and that's how Bayer has been anchored on, yeah. Um,
Okay, uh, uh, we don't have much time left, but maybe you could uh, zoom in on the areas of what you're going to be doing in the near future, um, at least uh, not, you know, out of the context of right. the elections in Malaysia, perhaps Bay as a group uh, globally. So uh, globally and also locally, it's quite connected. So, so for, for our pharmaceutical business, right, uh, we are focusing a lot on uh, trying to advocate telehealth, yeah, telemedicine. Oh, yeah. Wow. I know it's something that's I quite new in Malaysia. Its adoption rate is quite low. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you see that you see that area picking up because of the pandemic. They have no choice. Yeah, they can't. They yeah, more down. of that. Yeah, all right. But but now the pandemic is over, right? I think we, there's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Why do you people. think that's the case? Is it because of the uh, proximity of the clinic kesehatan and the proximity of the uh, ability for them to access? Uh, you know. I think I think the two things. There's mindset and there's also uh, inadequate infrastructure as well. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I believe it needs a lot of education because if you give people the information about how telemedicine can also reduce the, the displacement of patients in the hospitals, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you can also reduce, reduce the capacity so that they can focus on yeah. more important yeah. and urgent, yeah. right? So, and also for the patient, the now, There's a lot of upside, time, but the, yeah. the idea here is to change consumer behavior. That's another thing that you need to do. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so telemedicine. Yeah, so that's one. And then uh, we will continue to advocate for self-care agenda, working with the industry as well, yeah, to shape policies that allow better access, drive greater flexibility to illit literacy and education. And for our you know, crop science division, we'll continue to make sure that whatever we do is in the light of food security, self-sufficiency, especially in a crop that's so important like rice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted you in on the final week of uh, elections is because you've been working with Bayer uh, around the globe. You're back here in Malaysia. You're in fact, if I'm not mistaken, you're the first Malaysian boss of Bayer, if I'm not mistaken. That's yeah, I haven't been working around the globe to be here, uh, but I've working with many bosses from around the globe. Yeah. Uh, not, none of your leading. Correct, right? I'm the first Malaysian uh, managing director, yes. And, and, and that, that is a big deal, at least for me. Um, and I feel that we need to have more of these stories from Malaysians, uh, right. you know, leading at least, if not, you know, around the world, uh, just companies are, or MNCs that are in Malaysia. Why do you think this is the most important general election? Oh, sorry, I'm putting words in your mouth. <laughs> do you feel that this is a rather important general election or do you feel that this is one of those many other elections that we've had in the past? Um, every, every general election is important. Yeah, I've, been, I've, I've voted for every general ele election yeah, as far as I've been in the country. Uh, mm. uh, so, so first of all, um, I have a personal stake because I'm Malaysian. Yeah, I, will, I will execute my responsibility to vote, yeah, uh, to make the right vote. Uh, and this, this election itself is important because we are also in, 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 in a phase where Malaysia is transitioning. We are transforming. If you look at what happened in 2018, right, we're already into that direction, right? So this is another decision that will make us transform and hopefully for the better. And we need a lot of critical change in the system to bring Malaysia back to where it was. It means it's on its way. I'm not saying that it wasn't there, but, but I think there's more to be done. Yeah. A lot of people are going to not like me for saying this, but there are a lot of good candidates on a lot of all the uh, coalitions. You can't just, you know, blanket ban and say, you know, only this coalition has a lot of good people and the other coalitions don't have good people. But generally speaking, we might see very strange results coming in from this election because you have candidates coming in uh, from the different, uh, different political divides, they have uh, you know, uh, interesting track records, there's a lot of hot seats in and around the country, um, and because of this, the uncertainty is that, oh, yeah, not to mention only 18, and those that are voting for the first time, apparently there's 6 million out of the 22 million or 21 million, so we're looking at a third of the electoral um, uh, uh, population that might turn out and vote very strangely, we've never seen these kind yeah. of trends before. Are you concerned about the results? Do you feel that a lot more uh, certainly can be done if we get more people to come out and vote? I think in any election, you know, the more that come out to vote will always be more representative yeah, of, of the country's voice. Yeah. That, that is a good sign. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the, I think there is generally hope yeah, with that whether the government that's going to be uh, taking the, the country forward right, will make policies that it's critical to drive health reforms. Because again, uh, talking about healthcare, which is most critical for fundamentally for any country to be uh, to be progressing, mm. yeah. And and in, in Bayer, right, progressing to better life with science is what we advocate for, mm. and that is also the policies that we hope the government will shape mm. moving forward, right? And and uh, and we will be ready to partner uh, in that sense, yeah, to secure, you know, in the needs of 
health and food, which is what we serve most basic. Yeah. So knowing this, knowing that we might have a very interesting result, knowing that um, the political risk of the country might not necessarily abate, but generally mature um, mm -hmm. and 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 transform, as, uh, as I would use our words, mm -hmm. and knowing that the you know global situation might not necessarily be um, favorable to consumers outright. Uh, including that of inflation, recession and many others. Mm. Um, and in the uh, realm of food, I'm sure food inflation is just going to go up and up. Um, uh, subsidy is going to be a big problem in terms of how the government needs to manage it or targeted subsidies. All this, how bullish are you in, in taking Bayer forward for 2023 and perhaps even longer than that? Uh, we, we, are, we are very confident because we, we today, like I said, we, we are, you know, um, having an, uh, a stake in the most essential needs of human yeah you cannot food. get wrong yeah food and health so and we've been do doing that for the last you know yeah. 50 years yeah. and, and of late we've evolved yeah. right in, in that in the right direction yeah. uh, we will continue to use our innovation yeah the innovation that we have and uh, moving even forward with new new uh, new things about talk about self care and also in pharma with you know and also in in times to come promising things on cell and gene therapy will also you know bring it to Malaysia so so these are the things that we're quite bullish yeah that will still be relevant uh, regardless of you know whichever government takes over and we will be ready uh, to capture that yeah and if you look at Bayer as as a whole in Malaysia right in terms of the adoption of the next normal as a company right the culture is already there yeah we've actually evolved this year uh, pushing through our ambition with a new working environment mm -hmm. next normal and we've been quite bold right to reduce our carbon footprint by cutting our office space by half mm -hmm. and that drives the engagement of our employees to be more inclusive mm -hmm. diversified and mm -hmm. flexible so that we can be at their best so definitely we're ready Fantastic. That was our conversation uh, with Leong Suk Fan, the uh, Fire Malaysia Managing Director. Um, it's only four more days to go, to be frank. Um, today is the fifth day, but of course, four more days to go. Um, I'm sure many of you have made up your minds. Unfortunately, as a student blue voter myself, I haven't been able to conclude who I want to vote. Uh, perhaps four more days is enough for me to decide. But uh, do let us know what you think about the conversations that is happening on this channel. Um, also stay on astroawani.com and all Astro Awani's platforms because we're going to be bringing you all the latest news and updates regarding the 15th general election. Stay on Astro Awani, your 15th general election channel. Mm -hmm.